Car Care 101. All right, Jen set this up. It's uh, we're getting really good, uh, really good feedback from it. Um, the way we set this up is, you know, obviously you all all live at home, so you have rules of the house. How many people have taken driver's training? Oh, almost all of you. Well, so driver's training, you've learned the rules of the road, and what we're here to teach you are the rules of the car. We're not going to get really in depth, but we're going to do an overview, pop the hood change a tire and talk about some real life scenarios. Okay, um, this is my car. It's more realistic. It's all dirty and muddy. It's got dents in it. Um, and here's a, here's a brand new car. Um, how many uh, how many people, you, anybody folks have your own car? No? No, just, no. but you're gonna someday, right? Soon? Yes. Yes? What, what do you want? What? I'm just gonna ride bikes everywhere. You're just gonna ride bikes everywhere in the winter? Most likely. Um, when you oh we got one more guy? Okay, when you when you do start driving, Neil? Yes. Welcome. I'm Bob. Yeah. Um we're just, I just we just went we just started the first the first thing. You live at home, you have rules of the house. When you take driver's training, you learn the rules of the road. This is the rules of the car, okay? Um, the first thing you wanna do, we're, we're gonna go over several things tonight and we're gonna, all, we're gonna come back to becoming familiar with your car over and over and over. All cars are different, all cars have their little, you know, special little things about them. Some of them make special noises, some of them drive a special way and you, you'll learn to, to know that and know what's normal and what's not. Um, the first thing we should, you should become very uh, comfortable doing is doing a walk around. Walk around your car. You, do it with, you can do it with the... Uh, limp. Well, you, you could limp around your car. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can do it with the lights on. You can do it, you can do it with the headlights on and the, and the four ways on and you can check all your lights. You can look at the tires, you look at the bulge in the tire right here and see, you know, make sure that one's not bigger than the other, right? And uh, with the four ways on and the headlights on, you can see almost all the lights. You could see if there's any dents in your car. Because if there does, you know, a dent, you do have a dent in your car, somebody's going to ask you, you know, where it came from. So it's nice to know. Hmm? Or if you, at least if you do dent your car, you know how to park it in the driveway so your mom and dad can't see it, right? So, you know, just do a walk around, look at the wipers, look at this, look at that, look at the tires, look at the lights, make sure that, that uh, there's not, you know, a dead cat hanging from the exhaust, whatever. And then the next, the very next thing you're going to do when you start driving, this is a really terrible part, is you're going to start putting gas in your car. Okay, how many different kinds of gas are there out there in the world? We're gonna we're we're not gonna do all the different grades. All right, there's unleaded, ethanol, and diesel. Then all the different grades of unleaded. There, you know, there's 87, 89, 93. If you're driving a you know hot rod, you're gonna want to run premium premium gas. Um, other than that, you're just going to run 87 for most passenger cars. You're running a Cadillac. Can we new Camaros have premium gas? They use premium gas? Depending on what engine. Depending on what engine. And uh, another thing that we're going to touch on a lot today is uh, looking in your owner's manual. If you wonder what kind of gas your car takes, it's in the owner's manual. you have any questions in general about your vehicle, it's in your owner's manual. Yep. We're going to talk a lot about that. It's kind of like the Bible for your car. So if you need to reference back to something or get an idea for something on your car, your owner's manual has it. You guys might be getting an older car, being your first car, you might not have an owner's manual. If you got questions about it, contact the brand manufacturer about it. You know, you can call up to a dealership and ask a question, what kind of oil does my car take? They'll let you know. But your owner's manual references everything that your car that you need to know about. And then you have outside questions about that, you can always contact the manufacturer of your vehicle. Information's free. We're not going to diagnose your car over the phone, but general questions about your vehicle. How many people by show of hands have put gas in a car before? 
Wow, a lot of you, huh? What's your... Well, yeah, it's too cold out, so the kids got Yeah, the kids, yeah, hey, go yeah. put gas in the car. Well, well great. Hey, we have, a, we have a, our box of goodies over here. Got a couple of... Now, you can barely see it. This is unleaded gas, and it's, you know, that size, probably three quarters of an inch. This, anybody have an idea what this is? It's not leaded gas. It's, it's, this is diesel. It's this is diesel, and it's it is uh, it's designed so you can't put diesel in in your car. You can go the other way around though, but it's designed so you can't put diesel in your car. But actually, you really could if you really tried. You know, if you really wanted to, you could do it. So if you find something that's not working real good, take a step back, take a look around. You might have the wrong thing, and you think, oh, I would never do that. We do it. We we get people to drive in here with their car on a wrecker all the time. Diesel in a gas car, gas in a diesel, happens all the time. People, you know, you get in autopilot and you just start, you know, doing stuff, you're talking on the phone and, and it happens. So pay attention and uh, pay attention to what you're doing. If you're driving a car that you're not familiar with, like this car right here, where's the gas door? My car. It, on newer cars, my, mine's on the driver's side, this one's on the passenger side. You'd think that would be uniform, that would, they would all be like, oh, they would all be on the driver's side. So you pull up to the pump and it'd be right there. Not the case. This one's on the passenger side. If you look at the gas gauge on modern cars, uh, there'll be a little picture of a gas pump, because there are no words anymore, they're all pictures. Um, and there'll be a little arrow. And what that arrow designates is which side the filler neck is on. So just a little tidbit, um, you probably will learn your own car very quickly, but uh, if you borrow a car or if you, you know, fly off to Florida and you rent a car, you know, he's like, wow, where's a stupid gas filler on this car? Look at the gas gauge and you'll pull up to the pump and you'll look like a star. Okay. We're following our, uh, guidelines. we're following our guidelines very close today because we have special guests. Yeah. Again, get familiar with your car. There's like 20 different kinds of wiper blades out there. For Some of them clips seem, and retainers. Yeah, and yeah, this this so. one's super easy. This pops off just like that. Just because I know that. Um, mine may be different. I don't even know. Uh, others have bayonet style where they stick through the side. Uh, the traverses have a little clips where you got to lift up a little thing and then it pops out. And, and there's no, you know, can't say you're like a wiper blade expert. Get to know your car, become familiar. When you buy two new wiper blades, cause you know, you got a bonus at work and you're going to go to Cedar Point next weekend, you know? So I'm going to fill up my car and I'm going to put, I'm going to check all the tires and I'm going to put new wiper blades on it. Take your best wiper blade and save it, throw it in the trunk. And then if you're uh, driving down the road and you end up with a wiper blade that looks like that one over there, starts to fray and flap around, boom, you can, you can stop and get it and fix it. And, and when they, you know, yeah, when, when they go bad, um, you know, out there right now, you couldn't drive. You couldn't drive to Troy, you know, without, you know, this, this uh, salt on the, that they put on the roads is going to spray up, it's going to turn white, and you've seen it. You've seen bad windshield windshields where you run out of bug juice or something like that and you can't get the window clear. It's dangerous. You're a danger to yourself and you're a danger to everyone around you. So. Also what you guys can do in a pinch, like you can see these two have two different size wiper blades. Well, let's just say, I mean, you started your car up and you bent a wiper blade by turning them on with all the ice that you, you can see it here. But you can see that these are two different sizes. I mean, you need to get somewhere I don't care about the passenger, the driver needs to see. You can take this blade off here, and we can take that blade, even though it's shorter, and we can put it over here on this one. It's going to at least give you an area that you can see and drive. So it's just something good to keep in mind. But don't drive with just this being steel on the windshield because it's going to scratch your light. But if you got an extra sock or glove in the car, just put that over until you can get the wiper blades back on. So it's a little trick that we've learned, you know, over the years that you can still get where you need to go by swapping the wiper blade out until you can get it. And then we go to the hood. Take a pop the hood. You guys know how to open up a hood of a car? 
All right. You got it. We got a. We can get another volunteer if they want to do Bob's car yeah, too. We're going to get two volunteers, one in each car. Well, first, we're going to have a latch inside the car. No, we got to release it inside the car first. Yeah, come on. Oh, okay. We're learning. That's what we're here to do, guys. So come on around. We sold the, we sold the tracker. And you can see down there. We sold the tracker for several years back in the early 2000s. And the All right, now you're hooked on Still won't open, right? It's a safety valve. Because if you were to pop your hood and you didn't know about it, and you started driving down the road, your hood would fly up and hit your windshield. And then you'd be freaking the heck out. You'd say it's some choice words. But there's another, it's called a secondary latch, just in case you ever hit that latch. It's right here. <laughs> It'll always be somewhere up in front of the grill, right by where the latch is, in order to open up the hood all the way. All right? So it's another thing once you get your vehicle to be familiar about. You're going to have a release handle somewhere around the driver's area. Under an avalanche or underneath the bow tie? Right, exactly. But they're going to be somewhere right in line, you know, generally with the hood latch. Yep. Generally. So, and look in your owner's manual. We'll show you. Yeah. Once again, owner's manual. Great, great. But there's always a primary and a secondary latch, this being your secondary, and the primary being the one that you release inside the car. Anybody identify anything on the hood here? Yeah. Engine. All right. Anything wow. else? Wiper juice. Yeah, wiper juice. Where? Wiper juice. Right, right, right by your pink stuff. This one? Yeah. yeah. Anything That's else? Stuff. <laughs> it's pink stuff. Pink stuff. Like That's the, awesome. Like Kool-Aid stuff. Kool yeah, like Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. So that's the reserve Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where you don't like your buddies either, because everyone will drink it and die. So that's where you hide it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. now everybody knows where I'm back to So it's not a good hiding spot now, is it? Yeah. I'll put one in the yellow spot. Can we see anything else in the hood, guys? Can we identify anything? Yeah. Is it, they've changed quite a bit over the years. The tubes and, and the wires and such. Okay. I'll take that. Good enough. Good enough. I'm going to go through the do not touch test routine. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Like a hand right there. You see this hand right here with the X? Yeah, don't touch it. It's going to be, you're going to burn yourself. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go over some stuff here. And what we've learned as we try to teach this class, you know, the basics um, to new drivers, it's not about how to do stuff under here. It's how not to mess things up, okay? This right here is a master zone. Okay, this is holds the fluid, uh, uh, brake fluid for your brakes. Okay, there's no need for you to pull with this. There's no need for you to add anything to it. Don't touch it. It has a sensor on it. The light will come on when it gets low. Probably need brakes. If you see, you know, see it says minimum and maximum here, and you can see the fluid in it because it's clear. If you, you know, this is so new, it's so full, you can hardly see the bubble. But if you, this starts going down, and you have to add fluid. It's leaking out somewhere. These cars do not consume brake fluid. You use it, and then when you put new brakes on it, you squeeze the calipers, and the brake fluid comes back in here. And it's always there, and it doesn't consume it. Here's coolant, engine coolant, right? It used to be green, green freeze, and now it's um, now it's pink or orange. And depending on your manufacturer, there's seven, eight different colors of coolant. Yeah. So. And right, it says right on there, 20 psi. Right, that's 20 pounds. 200 degree oily industrial liquid. Don't touch it. Don't fool it. If that's low, you want to change, you want to check it or add fluid to it first thing in the morning when the car's dead cold before you start. Not when you drove to the gas station, not when you drove to your buddy's house, not when you drove to school, before you start it. Because if there's any pressure on it at all, it could, it could come out. You pop the hood, it could shoot the cap out of your hand. And, uh, there's all, you know, the old and it is what it says. It's engine cool. Yeah. So it's trying to cool down your engine. So this fluid, when the engine's running, is about 210 degrees. Yeah. It's just right at the boiling point. Super hot. And it's under pressure, so that's why he's saying you never open it hot. You could get sprayed by boiling hot fluid. I mean, we're not trying to scare you, but we need you to make you aware that, you know, this is one thing that can, you know, hurt you or damage you. So. Although, you know, you could get hurt under here. You know, I mean, there's hot, hot stuff that can burn you. Chemicals at boiling point under Pressure. This is really Moving good. fans, belts, Move, pulleys. Yeah. So. Um, here's something you can touch. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, <laughs> bug juice, yeah. Bug juice is slang. It's uh, washer fluid. Um, in southern states, you know, we won't talk bad about the people who live in the south, but they can put water in We have to use this. Negative 20, last week, by the way it worked, my radio said negative 29. That's the most I've ever seen in my life. So you've got to use that in Michigan. You should have this bowl if you're going to go on a trip. You should, if you're using it a lot because there's a lot of salt on the road, you better think, man, I've been using a lot of water. Yeah, when you I go to the gas station. You should have a gallon. You should have a. You should have a box in your trunk, and you should have like, you know, a candy bar, a bottle of water, a set of mittens, a UV scarf, a solar blanket, some bundles. So in case you end up on the side of the road, you're not gonna. Another thing you can see on all these caps, guys, there's a picture of a book here with an eye. There's a picture of a book here with an eye. You can see right here is a picture of a book with an eye. It's saying that if you have to inquire about what this stuff is, refer to your owner's manual. If you're not sure, um, your owner's manual will tell you everything, and that's all these labels are telling you. If you're not sure what kind of fluid it takes, or there's any special directions or precautions that you gotta take when filling them, look at your owner's manual. And that's all that these little indicators are telling you. Is if you're not sure about it, refer to your owner's manual first before you start pouring a fluid in it or checking the fluid. You know, like a brake fluid doesn't even tell you what kind of fluid it takes. And there's probably, what hell, it, probably a good dozen types of brake fluids they have different boiling points on. Yeah. So, I think Jen said it best. Brakes are the number one safety item on your car, and they should be serviced by a professional. Yep. Yep. Um, how many people here listen to music? It's like when you jump with people. Um, if you listen to music, you pop your trunk and you, and you, you you're jamming out with your buddies, beats, in the woods, whatever, in the garage, and you kill your battery, you might end up, in a, you might, uh, might need to jump some time. That's where we're going, right? Well, I think we need to check a couple fluids real quick. Oh, that's right. You know, we'll get right back to jumping a car and seeing once our battery goes dead. It says right there, same to last. Yep, but we need to, uh, you guys ever check oil in your car or check trans fluid or any of that other stuff? Yeah. All right. Trans fluid is going to have, this is for checking our engine oil, it's yellow. Trans fluid is going to be a red handle just like this. But we need to check our oil. And the thing is, is that's getting familiar with your car like Bob was talking about. We're not getting a newer car, our first car. And it's getting familiar with your car. If you burn a little bit of oil, when you first get a new car, like Bob was always saying, he has a good, good reference to it. Start checking oil once a week. And you do it for a month, and you're like, man, it hasn't moved in Okay, so that for that first month that you checked it four weeks in a row, now you can check it once a month. Yep. And then let's just say once a month, you see it and it's halfway down. Well, then you know it's your car is using or consuming or dripping about a half a quart a month. So you'll know that in reference to that, all right, I burn or use about a half a quart of oil a month. So you know what you're going to have to add to your car in between oil changes. And one way you check your fluid is what well, we can see on here. There's three lines and there's hash marks here and hash marks here. And you show all you guys, you see the hash marks at the bottom and your three lines and your hash marks here. What it's saying is once it gets down to this point, you need to add oil. Once it's up here, this is a safe level in this area. Anything in between here, you can still drive your vehicle. But once it gets down to this point, we need to add anything in between here safe and that's your max full position. And more is not better, you never want to over full. If your engine has too much oil in it, Splash it. Oh. Now look at it, it's a brand new car, and it's probably a quarter of a foot long. But at least we know that that's how much oil is you know, out of it. You start checking it once a week, once a month, and you can see how much your car is using. Just to get familiar with your vehicle. Also, you can look in here, and it, this cap tells you it takes 530, and it's Dexos, which is a special special type of oil. Also, get familiar with your vehicle, know what kind of fluids your vehicle takes. So, there's different weights of oil, there's synthetic, there's semi-synthetic, which says that this is, and it's just conventional oil. Yeah, right here we have 5W30, newer car. Right here we have a 15-year-old car, 10W30, it says it right on the cap. Now over here, Bob, is a transmission tube. This car, this is what's referred to as a sealed transmission. This 
The trans fluid is the only fluid that gets checked with the engine running. The engine has to be running for this to be checked. So we start this up. You clear? Yep. Yep, that's mechanic's car. When you start this up, <laughs> we'll pull this guy out. You can see our red fluid this transmission fluid. But on here, you see there's another dot and a dot, and there's a window in between here. That's where that fluid sheet is, is between those two dots. And once again, you can see those hash marks on it too. But it's the only fluid that you have to have the vehicle running in order to check. Anybody got any questions about the fluids on the vehicles? Pretty straightforward, isn't it? All right. Well, now we're up to listening to the tunes and our battery went dead. So we're going right back to that. Guy. Yeah, there we go. We got a dead car. This car, is, you've been hanging out with your buddies, listening to tunes for a while, and you go start it up and it won't start. What do we do? Do that. Jumper cables. Absolutely. Can we get shocked by our battery cables? It's an electrical system, right? You think you can get shocked? Bob's got caps on his. But a battery, you always see there's a black cable on it and a red cable, and they're also made uh, identified by a plus and a minus sign. Your positive is plus, your negative is minus, just like math. Your positive is going to be red. And like this one, you can't see, because everything's shielded, but you can see a little bit of tape and there's a red cable coming out of here. Yep. You always see the positive's always going to be red, the negative's always going to be black. This is a 12 volt system, but you can't get shocked by it. There's one thing that you aren't safe about with a vehicle. I'm touching both cables and you're not going to poke out whatsoever. Yep. So it's one thing you have to be aware of, you can't get shocked by it. Um, even if it was running, you still can't get shocked. So. But this car is our good powered car, and that's our dead car. So let's get some jumper cables out. Have Willie assist us here. I didn't believe it. I bought this thing the day I saw it. It was the week that they came out and they hit the market, and I'm like, man, I gotta have it. It's got the big terminals down here. You hook that up to your dead battery, plug it in, hit the button and turn it on, and you can start the car. Pretty cool. And plus, it charges your cell phone, your yeah, laptop, yeah. your tablet, yeah. your DS, uh, Nintendo DS game, yes. all, all <laughs> in yeah. yeah. Good yeah. This, this was, I Good for it. trips. I bought it when it first came out, yeah. and it cost me about 150 bucks. They have them on Amazon.com for 90 bucks now. You should ask your, ask your parents. Good job. <laughs> you can ask for All right, so you don't have to knock it Yeah, if you don't have that, then you're gonna need jumper cables. Do um, you guys know if we should use the which car we should hook it up to first, dead one or the live one? We're actually gonna go with the dead one first. <laughs> so, live jumper cables out there with all that juice up into a good car, you know, that's gonna be running soon. Right. But even though, uh, even though we'll just say this this battery is dead on on this vehicle, you still don't want the cables touching each other once you hook them up either. So um, a good thing to do on the other set of on the other end of the cables is just uh, hook one end to the other. Um, that way they're not flopping around and hitting each other. Because if they do, um, it's not going to shock you, but it'll spark. And if it does, you know you can get that in your eye. Something like that, that wouldn't be any good. It could cause damage to your vehicle. Right. Driving out a system like that. Um, so, like Matt said earlier, the red one's always going to be the positive, uh, black one's going to be your negative. So, we'll go ahead and hook this up. use on a vehicle just so you guys know you see like this big steel bracket that's a grounding even though it's not painted black it's not marked with a negative 
everything that's steel on a car is a ground. But these are painted surfaces, so even if you clamped it on here, it's not going to get a ground through. But any time you see like a heavy steel bracket like this, you could put your negative cable on this if you couldn't find your battery. But there'd always be something identified under the hood, positive and negative, for just yeah, some, some cars, cars, the battery's not even under the hood. Yeah. Right. Quite a few cars with no battery. And in that case, like even on Bob's car here, even though the battery's right there, there's another spot to jump in here. You can see the red thing is marked. So it's another spot positive. But they're always remarked, you know, red and black, positive and negative. So, one thing like Willie was saying, and we're just going to do this real quick, but you can see what happens. That's, there, see? And that's why you don't want to let these contact one another. Because they ground out for that. You know, and you cause damage. You heat the stuff. Yeah, it's going to be red hot. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yep. Like one and a half seconds. Yeah. So, we're going to the other vehicle, and we got our negative and our positive. Which is their negative, guys? Black. What symbol is that? Excellent. All right. We're going to This is my minus. This is my plus. Now we got them all hooked up. This is our power car. We're going to start this up, or we're going to let this run. How long should we let it run? before we try to start that vehicle. 10 seconds. No. Yeah, that's going to get you nowhere. Now, a few minutes. How long would it take you to charge your cell phone if it only had one bar? Two bars. Two How many bars, bars are there total? <laughs> How many, How many bars, bars are there total? say five Two. bars. OK, so like that. Uh, an hour. Uh, Four hour. Hour. 45 minutes. Yeah, so if you wait 10 seconds, it might start, but it's going to be, it's going to have that battery. It's going to yeah, and you might take the cables off and you put it in here and it stalls back up because it just doesn't have the power to do that. That's why we ride bikes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, this is where we, to see, this is our segue. It's where we migrate from bikes and go to vehicles, guys. You're going to be able to go somewhere farther than two miles away. It's a lot easier for the set of jumping cables. Unless you're saving your two-mile comfort zone. Then you don't to ride a bike for the rest of your life. Yeah. But typically, you're going to let your, you're let your vehicle run for a good five to ten minutes before you start the other vehicle. What that's doing is allowing that battery to charge for okay. All later on this car, there's a charging system on this car is going to charge the battery in that car as if it were a tool. And another thing is, is while that car is charging, make sure the key's off. Make sure all the headlights are off. Make sure your radio is off. This car too? Yeah, both. Well, because you're taking power away from this that's trying to charge that car. So when your headlights are on, it consumes power. When your radio's on, it consumes power. When your heater's on, it consumes power. And we're trying to put power to that vehicle. So make sure all that stuff's off when you're jump starting the vehicle. Because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna start that car and allow it to charge real quick. But after five, 10 minutes, you should be able to fire up that car. It's gonna be the same thing. Let's disconnect one. Same thing, be safe. Connect to this one because that one's live. You'll be able to take this guy, provided there's no puddles of water, set it down on the ground, and then go ahead and disconnect the other. Any questions on jump start? And this is something that this is what we, we like to say this right now at this point. If you're not comfortable doing this, don't. Yeah. Don't because it can be dangerous. Find somebody who is comfortable doing it. Make a phone call. Make a phone call. Go to your owner's manual once again if you're yeah. not sure. Yeah. So, it's those little things that uh, you know, if you're not comfortable with, like I said, it's your all reference guide to as regards your owner's manual. And, you know, as a whole world becomes sort of covered in bubble wrap and super safe, and you can't even poke yourself in the eyes with your thumb anymore, um, you can really hurt yourself with, uh, with a 12 volt tank, 300 volts. Well, you got any other questions so far? Any questions about Jumpstart? All right. Well, we're up to a flat tire and changing a tire. You guys ever changed a tire before? You guys got bikes. You ever changed a tire in your bike? <laughs> really? This whole time you've been harassing us and you don't even have a bike. <laughs> I'm my sister's bike. <laughs> That's awesome. It's got a basket in the front. You got a little doggy cruiser. Next step. Does it have a pallet? Yeah. 
after all that. <laughs> all right, guys. See what we got. We don't even know what we. We're going to say this car has a flat tire, and we're going to say that the rear tire is flat on this car too. One thing is, is uh, we've already discussed this. The most dangerous spot probably to change a tire is on the side of 75. You got cars going by you 70, 80 miles an hour. Comes back to it, you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Well, if you have to, you know, you can call for a roadside assistance, or you can call your parents and do what you want to do. We recommend your tire goes flat. You can go a couple hundred yards slowly to a parking lot. We can go, you can go a couple hundred yards slowly to a parking lot, to somebody's driveway, something that's to get you out of the road of the traffic, you know, it's whizzing by you to change a tire. Um, if you can't, like I said, and you're not comfortable, you can go ahead and call somebody. So, we'll all go around here, we'll do it back here on this rear tire. Uh, all right, what's the jack? Um, you gotta be careful with it. It's not very wide, so it's not very sturdy. Um, usually, nine times out of 10, the jacks, they'll have a, this has got like a U-shaped spot in it. Um, there's gonna be four spots around the car, depending on which tire you're gonna do. And there's usually a little ledge sticking down um, on the side of the body, and that's where this is gonna fit into. So. It's just like a key. You'll see a notch in that, in that seam down there, just like that has the opposite match. So it's you know, the key one way up until you get in the right spot. That's you know, real important. It is, it is. And it's real important that you have a good firm surface underneath you. Even the shoulder of the roads are dirt. If it rained and you were to jack the car up, the weight of the car is probably gonna push a jack down into the dirt. So that's what I'm saying. Make sure you can drive a little bit to get in somebody's driveway. Make sure you can drive to get in a little parking lot or that you're on a firm surface. Because the shoulders of the road are dirt, they're soft. This car weighs a lot. When you're pushing it up, if it can push it down in the dirt, it's going to do that. When it does that, it's going to try to turn that jack too, and it's not going to make it as safe to lift the vehicle up if it's on, you know, an odd angle while you're jacking the car. So, should we jack the car up first, or should we pull the lug nuts off first? No lug nuts, no car. Just lug nuts. Car. All right. Now, if we we're going to do the lug nuts first, why why would we want to do the lug nuts first? Because then. Think yeah, um, you're, you're right actually. Um, with the lug nuts, if, if we don't break the lug nuts loose right now, and this car is jacked up in the air, and you'll see once we get it up, uh, you're going to try and take this nut off and you're just going to spin the wheel around. So with the car on the ground, with all the weight on it, the wheel's not going to spin around. You know, we're doing is break the nuts. <laughs> you're not going to take the lug nuts all the way off. We're just going to break them loose. <laughs> And then why don't we let a couple of these kids break a couple lug nuts loose too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just so you guys know how, how you know, tough it is. Yeah. But just watch with the tool. Another something something to think about. Um, you get your finger caught in here. This thing's pretty pretty stout. You end up hurting yourself pretty good. So. Make sure it's out all the way. Slide in. There it goes. Yep. See it all the way down? So strong. Hey, and let's, like you said, let's keep our hand away from here. If that comes back, it's going to pinch your hand and you're going to hurt yourself. There you go. See? All right, somebody else? All the way on. All, all the way on. Yep, make sure you slide it all the way down. See? You'll feel it go on. There you go. And that's all we're doing. We're just breaking them loose. You can see how tough they are just to break loose. You're up next, buddy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll give you a pass today. We can lay you down if you want. <laughs> there you go. There it is. There it is. All right. All right. Yeah. We already got this one on there. So that's it. They're just loose. You don't want to take them all the way off. Well, Will's taking it all the way off. I'll take this one off. I'll pass it around so you guys can see. Yeah. Well, he's jacking. But you can see 
that's where that's going to fit in there. And not every not every key is going to fit every car, so uh, they make about what probably fifty or sixty different ones. Yeah, and there's different manufacturers that are all different type. And it's just like a key in a car. I can't take the key from this car and go start that car. It's for that purpose. And let's see when you get a new car, make sure you have a jack in the car. Make sure you have the spare tire in the car. We see a lot of cars come in all the time there, used cars that don't have them, because people use them, they go take them out of their trunk and throw them in the garage, and then they hand them in. So just make sure your car, what it's equipped with when you have it. Which is also getting familiar with your car. So you want to get it up just enough to where the where the tire will spin. That's pretty much it. You don't want to go any higher than that. And you can see if you try to break those lug nuts loose, the tire will just spin in circles. You never break them loose. So that's why you just break your lug nuts loose while it's on the ground. Another good thing to remember too is with your lug nuts, when you take them off, you're going to want to put them in a spot where you're not going to kick them across the street or end up losing them. Um, so or if it's dark out, the right. <laughs> so there's that. There's the old one. We're good. Yeah, so obviously if you tried to tried to tighten it, you're just gonna be out here playing on the side of the road. And this is fun, but it's probably not gonna get you home very quick. No, it's just a reverse thing. You want to jack all the way down to where you can get it out from underneath the vehicle. We'll take all the uh, you know the bad tire, all your tools, we'll put them back in the trunk. But before you do all that, we want to snug all our lug nuts back down. Imagine if the jack is broken. Nope, not good. No, not so good. Well, the tire was better. You know, that's one thing, you know, we're not solicited by them whatsoever. But like AAA, they have roadside assistance. We checked into it. It's about twenty or thirty dollars a year. Something you might want to ask your parents. If you run out of gas, so maybe five gallons, a couple of gallons of gas on the side of the road. Let's say you get a flat and you're not comfortable with changing your flat, you call them up. Your car breaks down, they'll come out and they're gonna tow you. You know, it's twenty or thirty dollars, and uh, one tow bill for I think it's under ten miles is about ninety to a hundred dollars. So it's just a little bit of a you know safety if your parent. It's up to your parents. It's up to you guys when you start to be a new driver. 
But it's one of those things that you could have for roadside assistance if you're not comfortable doing anything. Yourself. That's it. There it is. Get them as tight as you can. I mean, you can see how long the handle is. It's not going to allow you to, you know, snap the ends of those off. So. And there's just one more thing that we didn't that we didn't cover. Any questions about these tires? No. No. Anything? Um, there's one more thing we didn't cover, and that is lights on the back. You know, nowadays we have check engine lights and anti-lock brake lights and stability track and all these other lights, nice. dinging yeah. airbag lights, all this stuff telling you what to do or telling you when there's a problem. <clears throat> and we want to just, you know, sort of ease your mind and you have to be aware at the same time. Remember, <clears throat> an airbag light or an ABS light is an amber light. So that means like, oh wow, I got an amber light on. That means, you know, you probably need to take it to the shop, but you can finish going to where you're going. <clears throat> brake light, on the other hand, is a red light. If you got a red light on your dash, stop driving the car. Or a flashing light. Or a flashing light. Stop driving the car right now. Red, you know, if you have a, brake, a red brake light on, you could, you could lose brakes, you could crash and, and, and die. And, and hurt other people at the same time. Amber light, don't get too excited about it. You got to put the light. cars. The cars telling you, hey, I have a problem. I got an amber light on the dash. Red lights, absolutely. Yeah, that'll be your only thing. Yeah. All right, just uh, we'll we'll grab some food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will take care of this car later. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Problem, guys. Thank you,